Well, hello everybody. My name's Jerry, Jerry Mears. I'm a member of the Mosquito Restoration uh, team here at uh, the museum. And I'm going to talk to you about the leading edge slats on the Mosquito prototype. The prototype was the only Mosquito ever fitted with leading edge slats. The reason being that because the aerofoil is a modified Percy section, the designers were not 100% sure of the low speed characteristics of the wing section. So they thought they would put the leading edge slats on it just to be on the safe side. They are really Hanley Page designed and de Havilland's took the complete design as it was and fitted it to the Mosquito. Now they uh, were only discovered in detail when we refurbished the Mosquito just for the prototype, sorry, just four years ago. They'd been on there ever since its last flight, mostly covered up with fabric, but also held in place by some aluminium strips, which I'll show you where the strips are later on. There is no control between the leading edge slats and the cockpit. They're operated purely aerodynamically, and I can demonstrate this if you like. Normally, with an aerofoil section, the airflow over the wing has what's known as a stagnation point, usually right on the leading edge of the wing, where the wing, where the airflow becomes stationary, some splits to go over the upper surface and some splits to go over the lower surface. Now, the stagnation point is normally about there. But as the incidence of the wing increases, which it would do as the aeroplane slows down, you need a higher incidence to create the same amount of lift, the stagnation point starts to move down onto the underneath surface of the wing. And at about the stalling speed, it will reach that crack running along there. The airflow then changes direction and goes through that crack and forces the slats out. That changes the whole shape of the aerofoil over the wing. It's a much different shape and you get increased lift at the lower speed. As the airspeed increases and the incidence decreases on the wing, the stagnation point with the flaps in the outward position starts to move back up there onto the leading edge and slams them shut again. So they're purely automatic. Now, the mechanism on them, there are four rails. There's one rail there, which is an I-shaped girder. There's one rail there, similar shape. There's another one there, and there's a fourth one there. The slats are in two pieces. The first piece to there, and then the second piece there. In the middle, the two slats are joined together and there's an air damper built into the leading edge. Now on this rail, there is a cable which comes from the front of the rail, round a small pulley, round a larger pulley, comes back again, round a pulley to the back of the rail. You have the same thing here, from the front, up to a pulley, back again, and to the back. Now those two pulleys are different size diameters, but they're joined together. And the ratio of the diameters is in proportion to the amount that this rail has to come out, compared to the amount that this rail comes out, because the inboard rail moves on, out a lot further than the outboard rail. On the outer flap, you have exactly the same arrangement with the ratios between the movement on that one to the movement on that one. But the only joint between this one and that one is the air damper in the middle. So that's how they work. The, the frames that they run in have got roller bearings. Right. Um, to run on. Now I was telling you about them being strapped in. If you see these fixings here, the, there was a, an aluminium uh, band which was screwed right over the front of them and they were fabriced all over. We've got the uh, 
flight records of the first 50 flights of the prototype Mosquito, and we've only found one mention on them of slats. It just says in the comments, slats, that's all. <laughs> so we presume that, that they were used then. Um, they found that they weren't re needed, actually. Uh, that's why they never appeared on any more mosquitoes. But it does make the wind um, construction so much more complicated because you've got a proper leading edge built inside here, and then you've got another aerofoil section to make on top of it. Much more complicated than uh, a simple leading edge. We knew they were there. We always knew they were there. You could see um, the marks of them through the fabric. One, we didn't know exactly how they worked. Um, and uh, we knew they were not controlled from the cockpit because there was no controls in the cockpit. And there were no cables running to the cockpit. So we reckoned they had to be purely automatic. But we weren't sure how they were governed. And it took us a lot, because we had to renew a lot of these cables. The cables had corroded, so we had to build up new cables. And it took us quite a long time to learn how to rig them, to get them to work perfectly. Because there are adjusters at each end of the cable. There's an adjuster there, and there's an adjuster on the same cable at the back. And the cable, when it's wrapped around the pulley, is anchored on the pulley so it will not slip on the pulley. So you've got three adjustable places on each rail. So in total, you've got 12 adjust adjustments to make to get them to work properly. Right, yeah, okay. I was explaining how they will all move together, okay? So you can see, I'm push it, pushing what? Three quarters of the way along? Ready? Okay? Don't ask me to pull them out again. 